the biggest south asian media group why media why media why media has newspaper midweek radio south asian pulse television you are watching channel y channel y a south asian canadian channel online southasiandaily.com the biggest south asian media group why media you are watching channel y channel y a south asian canadian channel व्यूअर्स मैं हूं शाजिया मलिक चैनल वाई के लिए आज हमने यहां पे एक प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस लोकल होटल में अटेंड की है जिसमें कि मिनिस्टर बेंस ने आज अनाउंस किया है कि चाइल्ड बेनिफिट के चेक्स 20 जुलाई से आने शुरू हो जाएंगे और उन लोगों को सिर्फ दिए जाएंगे जिनकी के फैमिलीज 50,000 से कम कमा रही हैं बल्कि थर्टी से भी कम कमा रही हैं इसके बारे में उन्होंने बात करते हुए कहा कि यहाँ पर पावर्टी बहुत ज़्यादा बच्चों में बढ़ती जा रही है तो इससे पावर्टी एलिविएशन को भी एक सपोर्ट मिलेगी उन्होंने कहा कि और भी गवर्नमेंट के बहुत से इनिशियटिव हैं तो आइए आपको इस प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस की एक झलक दिखाते हैं जिसमें कि आप मिनिस्टर नवदीप बैंस जो कि मिनिस्टर हैं इनोवेशन साइंस और टेक्नोलॉजी के उनके बारे में बात करते हुए उनको सुनेंगे और वो कुछ और भी डिटेल्स आपके साथ शेयर करेंगे सो विद दैट आई लाइक टू वेलकम एवरी वन दर्चुनिटी टू गो टू दैबसाइट इफ़ यू हैव एनी इन्फॉर्मेशन यू कैन गो टू डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट सी आर ए डैश ए आर सी डॉट जी सी डॉट सी एम ऑफ दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन अप देर and basically that enables you to determine if your family based on a circle set of circumstances of how much money you make how many kids you have which province you live in the amount of money that you'll receive uh, so it really allows families to know up front the amount of money that this program will benefit them by and so i also want to take this opportunity to say that um uh you know we are continuing to invest uh, also in infrastructure as i mentioned we made a historic investment of 120 billion dollars for infrastructure but above and beyond that we made a historic investment of 2 billion dollars a strategic investment fund for colleges and universities and we'll be making those announcements very shortly as well uh, and again if you have any questions for myself or uh, my colleagues we welcome that opportunity thank you very much um housing is uh, accessible to all canadians uh but there's also the the two markets that we're we're most concerned about uh, Toronto and Vancouver uh in which uh the minister of finance is well aware the finance committee is also studying um the housing markets in in both cities Vancouver and Toronto and further information will probably be available in the fall um but we did as soon as our government came into power in in 2015 we did change the mortgage rules um because we wanted to ensure that <coughs> that something like what happened in 2008 does not occur in, in Canada uh, with a housing bubble uh but our our housing market is very fiscally sound uh because of the regulations that we have mm -hmm. on mortgage rules on down payment rules and on amortization rates um so uh, all of these factors are are on the minister's desk and we will be ensure that we update the policies uh this fall and y you can you can make sure that uh, you'll be hearing a lot more from the minister on the housing market uh coming when the parliament resumes in September. Thank right. you. Yeah, well, uh, I I think it it's a it's a contextual question. Um when you when you look at it in terms of affordable housing, um like I mentioned before, it's it's the balance between free market economics, ensuring that the market um sets itself and government intervention, uh which is to ensure that, you know, Canadians that are working hard, uh, especially young Canadians that uh, are graduating <coughs> from university, getting their first job, starting a family, have an opportunity to enter the real estate market. Uh right now we're finding in Toronto and Vancouver that those are challenges that exist. Uh but then at the same time there's the affordability question on the lower end of uh, the the spectrum. But benefits like the Canada Child benefit will also help alleviate um those issues by giving monthly checks to families of uh low income households to help pr provide and pay for the bills. Uh, and that's what our government ran on and that's what government is committed to is to ensuring that all Canadians across the board uh irrespective of income uh, have an opportunity to succeed thank you uh but fundamentally we've committed to helping reduce the tax burden for middle class Canadians and we're doing exactly that 
we reduced the tax rate by 7% for middle class uh, Canadians. Mm -hmm. So that helps Brantonians. Um, and of course, as we mentioned, this very generous Canada Child Benefit, again, is additional income support to deal with exactly what you said with rising costs. And we work very closely with the province and the municipalities to find partnerships on infrastructure and other investments that will reduce the burden on property tax and other tax measures that uh, are incurred by families. Uh, so the bottom line is we're making direct investments and working with other levels to, to really help uh, families who are dealing with these challenges. But uh, Ruby, or yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, that was the one thing I was going to jump in on. We are speaking about the Canada Child Benefit, which is obvious, but I think a lot of those other concerns are some of those municipal level uh, issues. Property tax is one that comes up all the time. It came up in our campaign day after day. I know it's the rising cost of property tax in Brampton <coughs> is hard for people to manage. Uh, upon several you know, discussions with the mayor of Brampton, uh, their hugest uh, burden is infrastructure. And that has been the cost, uh, the reason for a lot of increase in property tax. And so we have been partnering, partnering just like the minister has said with the municipal governments so that we can add, relieve them of that infrastructure burden. And you know, we've invested a historic amount this year uh, in our budget. So hopefully, uh, along the lines, you will see some relief when it comes to property tax because of those strong partnerships. And uh, you know, whether it's that with the municipal government or the provincial, uh, we've been listening to what their concerns are and what their needs are. So I believe the federal government, you know, responsibility is to work well with these governments, figure out where they're having troubles, and uh, you know, to work as a team. And we're working on that. So all these different problems can also be solved down the road. But federally, what we can do directly, we have been doing, and that the minister has just addressed. So thank you. Uh, we, during the campaign, we had committed to doubling. Uh, this has been an annual uh, um, uh, program that actually was started by the previous Liberal government, so more than 12, 13 years ago. And uh, during the campaign, we committed to doubling that investment, and we had done that, we delivered on that. Uh, I know in, uh, in my writing alone, um, there's been over, uh, close to uh, 100, or 200 jobs have been created just in my riding alone. Uh, hundreds and thousands of jobs across the country have been created. I met several youth who would, uh, either in Mississauga or around the country, who have been benefiting from this initiative. Um, it is a terrific uh, uh, initiative to first help because youth unemployment is the highest, double the average, uh, the national average. So now we're helping young people uh, find jobs. We're also helping a lot of small organizations or NGOs to hire these young people. With that as well, we emphasize certain public policies. So we've uh, emphasized that people who are hiring young people to help with Syrian newcomers, uh, with Aboriginal issues, with uh, climate change. There is a, is a specific emphasis on these jobs. So not only are we giving young people employment opportunities, not only are we supporting small and medium-sized organizations, and particularly not-for-profit, but we're also advancing public policy and the, the public good uh, through these initiatives. So it's been a tremendous success. It's still ongoing till uh, near the end of August, and um, I'm happy to provide, our, all of us are happy to provide you with numbers that are specifically to our writings. Thanks. So oh, um, as, as we mentioned and during the campaign, so I've got this very neat chart here in front of me. Uh, so. Any, any amount over $200,000 in the previous system did receive a benefit of approximately, so for one child under, say for example, the previous government received a benefit about approximately $1,400. Under, under our plan, it's zero. So we're really focusing on the middle class. We're saying, look, if you're a millionaire, if you're making a couple hundred thousand dollars, you don't need this benefit. We're really focusing on individuals between the ages of incomes of 15,000, 45,000, 90,000, and up to 140,000. Uh, so that's where we're really focusing on in terms of the benefit associated with this program. Mr. Alberga, thank you very much for talking to us on Channel Y. I'm Shazia Malik. Um, sir, we would like to ask you two questions uh, categorically. First is about the summer jobs. And uh, the government announced that uh, it is going to be doubled. So uh, what is the status of that one? Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to announce to your viewers, to your readers, uh, that we fulfilled our commitment. We have launched the Canada Summer Job. Uh, in March for this summer, um, we invited we uh, with doubling the annual budget and doubling the number of jobs that were created. 
We invited organizations, small business, mostly NGOs, not-for-profit organizations, to submit their applications. We've encouraged them to focus on certain public policy aspects, like helping new Syrian newcomers integrate, uh, dealing with Aboriginal issues, dealing with poverty, dealing with seniors, dealing with uh, uh, um, uh, uh, climate change. So all of the hot buttons that we have here in our society, um, it creates jobs for young people. And it helps organizations, particularly not-for-profit organizations, to provide to receive this, the support that they need. Uh, we've doubled the budgets. Thousands of jobs have been created. A lot, thousands of young people across the country. Hundreds in Mississauga alone. Uh, more than a thousand in Peel region alone. Of uh, young people have found jobs because of this grant. Our second question would be, it is very heartening to see that uh, Canada has really taken a huge shift from the previous government's foreign policy. So what are some of the successes that you would like to list in this regard? That's a very important question because a lot of people, particularly in the Peel region, uh, uh, have keen interest in Canada standing around the world. And uh, uh, it, it, we feel a sense of pride about Canada's position around the world. And I'm really delighted with our, uh, our government's new tone, new approach to uh, international uh, policy. Uh, Prime Minister Trudeau continues to say Canada's back on the world stage. And we are demonstrating that and he's demonstrating that leadership by engaging through multilateral organizations, putting emphasis back on the United Nations. We've declared that we're running for a uh, Security Council uh, uh, seat in 2020 or 2021. Uh, we've also uh, uh, committed in, uh, to supporting the United Nations and all of its uh, organizations. We're talking about peacekeeping, so we're in, in bringing Canada back peacekeeping. Uh, we've also uh, reformed our approach to dealing with the uh, uh, a tragic situation in the Middle East. So we have now, uh, we're putting a lot of emphasis on capacity building there. We're putting emphasis on humanitarian aid. And we pulled uh, uh, away our fighter jets because we think we could be we could play a much more productive, much more effective role with our allies uh, through these approaches. So uh, we're certainly, uh, you know, uh, engaging Canada. We're bringing back Canadian values around the world. We're promoting human rights everywhere, and we know that the best way to advance human rights and Canada's interests is through engagement. Thank you very much for your comments, and we wish you all the best, sir. Thank you very much, and it's good to see you. Uh, Mr. Swin, thank you very much for talking to us. We would like thank to you. ask you if you can give us a preview of the Defence Review. So, thanks very much, first of all, for, uh, for the opportunity and thank you for being here this morning. It was a terrific announcement on the Canada Child Benefit and we talked about economics as well. And uh, as you know, this is a government that's very engaged in consultations and hearing from Canadians. And our Minister of Defence especially has opened the doors. He's conducting a national defence review that's going on until the end of July. And he's invited all of us as MPs to hold consultations, to listen to our stakeholders. And there are really a number of, uh, of different layers to this. There's our community of defence contractors, people that are involved in technology uh, in the defense industry that are interested in, in uh, making submissions. But more importantly, it's Canadians. It's average Canadians who are saying, well, Canada is back on the world stage. We're going to do uh, a lot of good internationally, both on the humanitarian side, uh, but also on the security side. And so the minister is inviting everybody to make their submissions through the defense web portal. It's extremely user-friendly and accessible. And we would welcome an opportunity to hear from Canadians of all walks of life, really, to tell us what the Canadian forces are about, what the needs are in their minds that our women and men require to stay safe in the field and to stay uh, ahead of the technology curve, um, which is very important on the defense side. Uh, and also what they would like to see Canada do internationally to make sure that we move into a more peaceful and a more prosperous world uh, in the decade to come. Security, as you know, Mr. Swin, is becoming really a huge issue across the globe. So what are our security measures and uh, are they in place at all? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a very, very important question. I'm honored to serve on the Standing Committee for Public Safety and National Security. And we have a very engaged minister, Minister Goodell, who has currently um, tabled some legislation for the fall. There's also going to be consultations there. On the security side, the, the challenge is twofold. It's basically to make sure that we maintain our charter rights. 
Uh, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms is dear to every Canadian. It's uh, an instrument that we've embraced, that we use daily uh, in advancing jurisprudence and making sure that our human and civil rights are protected. But on the other side, that we provide effective security in a, in a world that's becoming very uncertain, that's by many accounts becoming more dangerous, more unpredictable. So we have to strike a balance between the Charter and effective security. And again, that's something that we need to do by listening to Canadians. What are the key concerns when people travel? What are the key concerns with respect to international terrorism, domestic terrorism? But most importantly, how do we make sure that we remain Canada, that we remain united and strong? strong and strong because of our differences and not in spite of them. Uh, about today's conference, uh, this child benefit that has been just announced, what are your expectations? It's an extraordinary time. I'm really proud to be part of the party that has formed this government. Uh, the announcement on the Canada Child Benefit is, is tremendously important, I think, to the future of our country to make sure that young families um, get that extra help, especially families in the middle class, um, to make sure that they can raise their children with the comfort that they require, to make sure children are educated, healthy and happy. Uh, so it's a targeted uh, benefit, it's a tax-free benefit, and it will lift uh, up to or almost uh, 300,000 children nationally uh, out of poverty. The poverty numbers here in Peel Region and Mississauga in particular are staggering. We've heard this morning from Minister Baines that uh, almost 20% percent of children live in poverty. Uh, so this benefit, which will start this month on July 20th, is an immediate uh, and very welcome break for middle class parents to make sure they can raise their children effectively. And we're very proud to have announced this. Thank you very much for your comments and times. Again, thank you for having me. An absolute pleasure. Uh, Sonia Ji, thank you very much for joining us today. Then, the press conference was announced that Minister Baines had announced the child benefit. So, what do you think about how much benefit of Brampton has been given to the University of Brampton? Yes, absolutely. Not in one writing. It was the promise that we had in the campaign. We had to go to the campaign on the road. We had to go to the Canada Child Benefit. So, we had to go to the promise that we fulfilled on the 20th of July. चेक वापस बाहर जा रहे ने डेट इस दे फुलफिल डेट कैंपेन प्रॉमिस उधे नाल की सारे ही पहली गलते जड़े मिडिल क्लास फैमिली नो जहाँ जड़े बच्चे जड़े इन पावर्टी जो मिनिस्टर बेंस ने किया वन आउट ऑफ फाइव जड़े किड्स ऑफ पावर्टी रह रहे ने उन्हें सारे नो बहुत फायदा होएगा इधर दो दे not for one riding across Canada. I'm so proud of our Prime Minister, our government, our party. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, thank you, Ji. Thank you for having me. We will keep on talking to you. Sure, thanks. Raji, thank you very much for talking to us today. The Ajari Kiti Minister Ben's announcement about child benefit. To see Apni riding the Barevich particularly Sanu the so, Tonua Kitnia complains are in this issue the Barevich, and how did you think of resolving it? Or in this light, Ajari new announcement, to a riding which Loganu country the which the Hoega Fida, to a riding the which Loganu Kitna Fida. Kafi Fada Hona, right? The end of the day, study average income Hagi around ninety thousand dollars in Brampton East, right? So Jere Parvara. कोरे बच्चे हैं कि या ठारह साल तो थल्ले उन अनु काफी परिवार अनु चैक्स मिल नहीं हैं ये दिन अल हेल्प ही होनी है तो एंड द डे जब तो भी ऐसी डोर नॉकिंग जानने हैं जब तो कैंपेन ची भी की दे होन भी कर दें लोग का ना गलन कर दें काफी टैक्सेस द मसला होना है दैट गवर्नमेंट दे टैक्सेस काफी हाई हैं वेदर Income tax cut tie up by 7% middle income class families was the as you on Canada child benefit increase kita though call juru note kind of a kata hai child benefit hai ga tax free so pishli sarkar da taxable siga on jodo check milan ghi after tax milan ghi so a both important chicha duji gala it's targeted so on jere apne meer lo kia ona nu koi benefit ni melna self jere bande anu chai da ona nu jade paase melna niya so at the end of the day jethe fedo sarkar kar saak diya hor paase so de jewaanj pon niya to see in ni meant kar de apne canadians that we want to make sure that they have enough money to eat at the end of the day thank you very much for your comments raj no problem anytime Mr. Benz, we are extremely delighted that you are here on the channel Y and you are here on the channel. You have announced the child benefit of the child benefit. It is 
ਰੀਅਲੀ ਹਾਰਟਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਹਿ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਕਿ ਅਮੀਰ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਪੈਸੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੇਣੇ ਸਿਰਫ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਡਿਜ਼ਰਵ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਨ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਦੇਣੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਅਮਾਊਂਟ ਐਲੋਕੇਟ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਡਿਸਪਰਸ ਕਰਨਾ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕਰੋਗੇ ਸਰ ਸੋ ਬੇਸਿਕਲੀ ਕੈਂਪੇਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਵਾਅਦਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮਿਡਲ ਕਲਾਸ ਦੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਹਨ ਜਾਂ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮਿਡਲ ਕਲਾਸ ਨੂੰ ਜੁਆਇਨ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਮਦਦ ਕਰੋਗੇ ਦਿਨ ਪਰ ਦਿਨ ਖਰਚੇ ਵੱਧ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਕਾਸਟਿੰਗ ਕਾਸਟ ਆਫ ਲਿਵਿੰਗ ਬਿਲਸ ਚੈੱਕ ਟੂ ਚੈੱਕ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਬੜਾ ਹਾਰਡ ਟਾਈਮ ਆ ਰਿਹਾ ਪਰਿਵਾਰਾਂ ਲਈ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਕੋਈ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲੀ ਬੱਚੇ ਹਨ ਜੀ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਖਰਚੇ ਵੱਧ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਸਕੂਲ ਦੇ ਖਰਚੇ ਵੱਧ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਟਰਾਂਸਪੋਰਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਵੱਧ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਜੀ ਸੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਪੇਸ਼ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਇੱਕ ਵਨ ਵੈਰੀ ਸਿੰਪਲ ਕੈਂਡਾ ਚਾਈਲਡ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਜਿਸ ਦੇ ਮੁਤਾਬਕ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਟ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਮਿਲੂਗਾ ਪਰਸੋਂ ਨੂੰ ਜੁਲਾਈ 20 ਨੂੰ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਚੈੱਕ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋਣ ਲੱਗ ਜਾਓਗੇ ਜੀ ਸੋ ਆਪਣੇ ਇੱਥੇ ਮੈਂ ਮਿਸ ਸਾਗਾ ਮਾਲਟੇ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰ ਲੈਣਾ ਤਕਰੀਬਨ 6000 ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਆ ਜਿਹੜੇ 30000 ਤੋਂ ਘੱਟ ਕਮਾਉਂਦੇ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੈਕਸਿਮਮ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਮਿਲੂਗਾ ਜੀ ਸੋ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬੱਚਾ ਕੋ ਜਿਹੜਾ 6 ਸਾਲ ਦੀ ਉਮਰ ਤੋਂ ਘੱਟ ਆ ਉਹਨੂੰ 6400 ਡਾਲਰਸ ਮਿਲੋਗੇ ਅਰਾਊਂਡ 530 ਡਾਲਰਸ 530 ਡਾਲਰ ਤਕਰੀਬਨ ਮਹੀਨੇ ਦੇ ਮਿਲੋਗੇ ਜੀ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮਿਲੀਅਨਰ ਹਨ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ 4 ਲੱਖ 5 ਲੱਖ ਕਮਾਉਂਦੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਬੰਦ ਕਰ ਦਿੰਨੇ ਆ ਸਾਡਾ ਫੋਕਸ ਹੈ ਮਿਡਲ ਕਲਾਸ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕੋਈ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਦੇ ਦੋ ਜੀ ਆ ਤਾਂ 80000 ਕਮਾਉਂਦੇ ਆ 70000 ਕਮਾਉਂਦੇ ਆ ਸਾਡੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਐਵਰੇਜ ਇਨਕਮ ਹੈ ਮਿਸ ਆਗਾ ਮਾਲਟਨ ਜੀ ਨਾ ਜੀ ਤਕਰੀਬਨ 80000 ਹੈ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਲਈ ਸੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਮਿਲੂਗਾ ਜੀ ਔਨ ਐਵਰੇਜ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਆ 2300 ਤੋਂ 2500 ਡਾਲਰ ਸਾਲ ਦਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਵਾਧੂ ਮਿਲੂਗਾ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਬੱਚੇ ਹੈਗੇ 17 ਸਾਲ ਦੀ ਉਮਰ ਤੋਂ ਘੱਟ ਸੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਪੇਸ਼ ਕੀਤਾ ਇਨ ਕੰਬੀਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਵਿਦ ਦ ਮਿਡਲ ਕਲਾਸ ਟੈਕਸ ਕਟ ਅਸੀਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਮਿਡਲ ਕਲਾਸ ਸੀਗਾ ਉਹਦਾ ਟੈਕਸ ਰੇਟ ਅਸੀਂ ਘਟਾਇਆ ਜੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਬਾਈ 7% ਉਹ ਵੀ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਟ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਮਿਲਦਾ ਪਲੱਸ ਆ ਕੈਂਡਾ ਚਾਈਲਡ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ ਕਾਨਫਰੰਸ ਚ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਰਟੀ ਟੈਕਸ ਵਧ ਰਿਹਾ ਆ ਹੋਰ ਖਰਚੇ ਵਧ ਰਿਹਾ ਆ ਸੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਲੈਵਲ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਨਵੈਸਟਮੈਂਟ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਕਿ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਹਦਾ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਮਿਲੇ ਜੀ ਅੱਛਾ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰੀ ਹੈ ਸਪੈਸੀਫਿਕਲੀ ਸਾਇੰਸ ਐਂਡ ਟੈਕਨੋਲੋਜੀ ਐਂਡ ਇਨੋਵੇਸ਼ਨ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕੀ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਬੱਚੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੇ ਸਾਇੰਸ ਔਰ ਇਨੋਵੇਸ਼ਨ ਔਰ ਟੈਕਨੋਲੋਜੀ ਦੀ ਤਰਫ ਉਹ ਹੈਂ ਦੇ ਦੇ ਹੈਵ ਥਿਸ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਟ੍ਰੈਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਇਨੋਵੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਆਰ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਿਊਸ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਸੀ ਇਨ ਫਿਊਚਰ so um jiden us systemic in the science technology engineering and mathematics canada has a mixed story uh it is which i see we're in the middle of the pack in other countries and the real challenging part is ki jiden uh, female participation is very limited uh, we need to do a better job there's only 28% that are in the stem field that are female and we need to improve that number so as it they focus kariya one of the initiatives of working with the provinces working with uh, the territories is really promoting coding so young age de bichon jere bacche if they know how to code i say it's just as important as reading and writing uh kyunki samay de naal jada technology vad rahi hai change ho rahi hai they need to have this skill set uh, overall our government is working on an innovation agenda uh jis de vich assi subhe na provinces na assi ral mil ke kaam kar rahe ha and this innovation agenda is really focused on how do we as you said identify high growth companies and help them grow uh how do we bring the best talent from around the world so we're looking at immigration uh how do we use government procurement so we spend a lot of money in government uh, 100 billion in all three levels uh, 18 billion federally uh, how do we use that to help canadian companies uh, validate their products or services or ideas so they can become more export oriented so overall uh we have a very robust plan on innovation this is a key part because we know that if we want to really grow the economy we have to bet on innovation uh and innovation will provide a sustainable long term for growth if we are to compete with the china's and the us's or the U- um, um, europe or if we want to compete with some of the emerging co- economies canada needs to really focus on innovation thank you very much minister sir for your comments and uh, we will keep on talking to you wonderful thank you very much